Welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey and I'm here with Zenron. Hello. What Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well-beings to watching absolutely every single Shonen Jump anime that's available in English. Uh, starting with Gintama and the other two series that we will get to. Well, there's more than two series, but the the, the ones that are completed and still need to go through being Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and Kuroko's Basketball, which we will be talking about Kuroko's Basketball today. <laughs> funny enough yeah i know i thought that, that made me laugh too i know i was like when it hit up the generation of miracles i was like wait a minute we are gonna get to talk about kuroko this week <laughs> just not in the way people probably expected and we'll be talking about today episodes 270 to 274 which also features in the middle of it the patriot reunion party arc which is like a two episode arc but the rest of them are basically one-offs um Yes, there we go. So let's start, starting with episode 270, which is a two-parter, and we'll start with the first part of it, which is called Mirror Show Beauty and Ugliness. Go ahead, Zen. So this is another two-parter. Uh, the first part is they are, or Gintoki and Kagura are like brushing their teeth uh, in the morning, and then they use up all the toothpaste, so Kagura goes to get more toothpaste. And do you guys have a mirror here? I don't remember there being a mirror here before. Uh, but they all run out of the room because for some reason, uh, Gintoki is like, you better not buy toothpaste with the money that I give you. Um, and chases Kagura out of the room. And then it turns out that the mirror is actually a two-way mirror and Sachan's on the other side of it in like a hole in the wall. Um, and she's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see Gintoki get naked in the bathroom. But then Shimpachi comes in, and he's like, I hope they noticed my haircut. And he keeps, like, changing his hair, like, ruffling it up and stuff. But then he keeps going into the same exact pose, and the hair doesn't change <laughs> at all. And then he uh, says that he looks like Tom Cruise, and he's, like, swinging a fan around, saying, don't call me Tom Cruise. <laughs> uh, then it ends up, ends up that he has huge chest hair, and he starts trying to shave it off. But then Kagura enters, and he cuts himself. And he makes up an excuse to leave, saying that the blood was a uh, grape Fanta. Yep. Uh, so he leaves. Kagura then comes in and has a tail, like a Saiyan. And she's like, it's how I braid my hair. I can't I can't get rid of it. I need to keep <laughs> it. And then um, she's like grabbing onto it. And then Gintoki surprises her and she rips the tail off. And then she also calls the blood Fanta, so she said that she drank Fanta and it just started exploding out of her ass. <laughs> um, and then she also leaves, and Gintoki notices the shaved hair and the tail, and he pulls off a wig, and he's like, you guys knew that I wore a wig this whole time. And so he picks up the chest hair and puts it on his head, thinking that it's a new uh, wig, and then he puts Kagura's tail in his pants, thinking that it is like a gherkin, it's like a like a pubic wig. And he's like, "Yeah, this is perfect." <laughs> and uh, Sachan like freaks out and kicks him and like smashes through the mirror. Uh, and then it's revealed that they all knew that she was doing that, and they created all this weird fake shit to like freak her out so she would stop. Uh, but then it's revealed later on that Gintoki is brushing his teeth, and Sachan is just on the other side of the wall, like pretending to be a mirror wearing the chest hair wig on and she's like see i'm a mirror of your real self now and then gintoki goes i don't wear glasses and then he pokes her in the eye and shatters her glasses <laughs> into her eye and that's where it is that's yeah perfect <laughs> that is exactly where it ends uh how'd you feel about this apart here zen uh it was all right it was kind of just silly but it was like funny enough that it that it worked for me I liked when Sachan was, like, having the breakdown. Like, I never should have looked at their true <laughs> selves. <laughs> yeah, it's true. When uh, she's at the other end of the mirror, she's just absolutely, like, talking shit. It is, it's, it is really funny. This entire premise is um, based on the idea of, uh, just show me that Gintoki dick real quick. That's what she actually uh -huh. is all here for. She calls it, like, the 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 one LGK, the one long Gintoki Gintoki. <laughs> Uh, she actually says, like, at one point, is like, I can ogle every last bit of him from the back of his blank to the tip of his blank. And I was thinking, is, is she saying the same word? Was she just saying dick both times? Because they say ass before, right? There should be no problem. I think so. Hmm. 
But either way, if she's just talking about looking at the back of a dick and the tip of it, it's the same thing. It doesn't change <laughs> based on where you look at it. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a very silly premise and the way that they obviously all... Um, the When that reveal, when she says like, oh, of course, she did. She does come from an alien race. So of course, <laughs> I guess she's a Saiyan. She was a Saiyan the entire time. Um, but she says like 274 episodes and I'd never noticed <laughs> anything like that of her at all. That's a crazy reveal to just drop this many episodes in. Um... Yeah, it was a very silly little premise, but it ended up working out pretty pretty nice for me right here. And then I did like the ending because it does seem to imply that um, after the initial shock of learning that he was bald in both the hair and in the pubic region, she did accept him at the end where she was ready to be like, okay, no, we're good now. <laughs> Everything's good. It was a little bit of a shock, but actually I can learn to live with this. And uh, he, of course, for her un undying devotion, punishes her as she should be <laughs> at that point. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, it was a nice little part here. Let's go on. And because I was playing a bunch of Sparking Zero, it was nice to see some more Dragon Ball stuff uh, in general. I was like, oh, man, I really can't get away from any of the Dragon Ball stuff this week. There's <laughs> a lot of it. Let's talk about part B, which is no one interested. No one is interested in license photos. Go ahead, Zen. So uh, Yamazaki uh, gets some kind of award, but everyone's making fun of him because they he's like not cool enough. He's like an inspector or whatever, and they're like inspectors are losers. They don't do anything cool. They just so eat he's like Anpon? fuck it. Yeah, they just eat Ampon and play badminton, and he's like, all right, I'm, I'm sick of this. I'm gonna go do something cool. And he sees uh, Zenzo, who's trying to get his ninja license renewed. And he's like, I want to be a ninja too. So he signs up for a ninja training course. Um, and they're like, you have to jump over the Asagi, which is like a little plant that grows. But they're talking about a person named Asagi, who is the old lady receptionist that like let them in. Uh, and they keep doing a bunch of ridiculous training exercises that have nothing to do with it. Like learning to breathe underwater, like through a reed. But instead of breathing through a reed, they're going to breathe through uh, the woman by having the woman fart in their mouth. And Yamazaki refuses. So Zenzo grabs him and shoves Yamazaki's face into his own ass and then breathes out the woman's fart. So the woman farts into Zenzo's mouth, who then farts it into Yamazaki's mouth and farts on his own. And it creates like a giant explosion uh, and like almost kills everyone. They move on to the next stage, and um, he says, like, all right, you have to kill her now. <laughs> and she gets upset and punches him, and it, like, knocks him out. Um, and then it goes back to them at the Shinsengumi headquarters, and they're like, wow, you, you're actually pretty cool, Mizaki. And he's like, you want to go out with us? And he's like, no, I already, I already ate. And I think that was a joke about the one... Um, the one training exercise that was like a video game where he's like throwing food and stuff that they have to catch. Yeah, the Chiku Chikua. It was like, either yeah, get your license yeah. or the Chikua, or as I throw a soggy out at you at the same time. It's like the video game gets progressively more, I just want to throw a soggy at people. <laughs> like at the beginning, it was like catch the Chikua and avoid Chikawa uh, and avoid a soggy. Or, and get your license, and then the second one, it was just the Jokoa and then Asagi, and then the last one, he just says, I'm just gonna throw Asagi around for a bit, and that's it. <laughs> that is the whole bit here. Um, this is a weird episode, right? <laughs> this is a, yeah, yeah, it sure was. It was, um, it was really fucking weird. There's no other, this feels like, um, that joke that always goes around for Totally Spies. Where it says, like, the barely disguised fetish of someone uh -huh, um, being uh -huh. a prop tier. Because when I was, like, when they, they went full human centipede and they went ass to ass to ass, I was like, this has to be what someone's into. This is, like, too elaborate of a joke. This feels like this entire episode is dedicated to get to this one bit and that's it. <laughs> and then it ends. Um, so I ended up being a very, like, this is... This, this, this one wasn't for me, which is a shame because I do like ninja stuff. <laughs> and I do like Zenzo, but, and I do like Yamazaki, but this one was just, like, way too weird for me. How, how do you feel about it? Yeah, not a, not a fan. 
Yeah, no. <laughs> it's a... Unusual. Very strange. A very questioning thing. The, the funniest thing about this episode is that I think while I was watching it, I think my mom was getting ready to go to work, and at one point I was saying to myself, please don't look at my screen. At any point that you're walking around, please don't choose to look at it right now as the ass-to-ass-to-ass sequence, the mouth-to-ass-to-mouth-to-ass sequence starts. Please don't, don't look this direction if you can. Please. And yeah, that's about it. Just to show how weird this is, don't even have a single note for this one. It's a literal, Uh -uh. this this happens. And (laughs) let's leave it at that. And move on. To the next episode, which is episode 271, um, arriving late to a reunion makes it harder to enter, and this is the start of the small little arc here, which is the Patriot reunion arc. Go ahead, Sen. Okay, 271. They are... It's Katsura, it's Gitoki, and what's the dude's name? Sakamoto uh, are all together, and they're like, yeah, we're going to have a reunion meeting, and uh, we're going we're gonna to do a flashback arc, because this is our, our anime is back now, and all good anime has a flashback arc. So we're going to do that now so that people like us again. And uh, Kentucky's like, I don't want to do a, I don't want to flashback. That sucks. And Katsura's <laughs> like, No, but you see, we're actually here because of Kura, Kuranoko Tasuke, who is the phantom fan of the four Joy Patriots from the, who was our secret backup. It's a parody of Kuroko, uh, Kuroko's basketball. Um, and so they're trying to remember him because like he invited us here and all of us don't remember him at all and that's super awkward when he shows up and we're not gonna remember who he is so we have to remember him quick and so uh they're remembering back to the war but it's actually a basketball game and katsura is like shit i'm on the bench because i didn't cut my hair and i froze my pokari so i can't i can't quench my thirst but then kuranoko gave him a pokari bottle that was uh, the perfect sherbet consistency, and he's like, "Yes, I can, I can cheer again." But then it was revealed that actually Sakamoto was the one cheering the whole time. Uh, and Gintoki's like, "Fuck, why are you playing basketball and not fighting in the war?" <laughs> and then uh, they, uh, it goes to Sakamoto's memory, and he's like, "The I remember the war, but I remember the aftermath of the war being even worse. And it's just him having diarrhea, but there's no toilet paper in the bathroom. And he's like, oh my god, I don't believe it. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to anyone. But then he finds a Picari bottle, and he's like, oh my god, I can just use this to clean myself (laughs) off. Um, But then it wasn't Kuranoka that left that behind either. It was Katsura, who also had diarrhea because he had too much Picari, so it made him sick. And Gintoki's getting pissed off, and he's like, I want to talk about the fucking war, not all of this stupid <laughs> shit. And then uh, they remember that there was a big battle, and they were going to be the rear guards. So they were like, everyone else is going to escape, and we're going to stay behind, and we thought for sure that we were going to die. But we lived, and as we were leaving the forest, we came across a vending machine that sells Pokari. Uh, and Katsura had the money, and he was like, I'll buy it, and you can pay me back. But then Gintoki's like, I bought other stuff for you more recently and they're like doing math on who owes who <laughs> money <laughs> yeah and then um Katsura's like oh no i i'm getting my condition is getting worse i'm bedridden i'm ill hey also did anyone uh have to pay gintoki for the drinks because he made me pay and i think it would suck if i'm the only one that had to pay and then sakamoto's like wait he charged me for the full price of the pack did i only have to pay for one and then they realize that Kentucky stole their money. Um, and then someone else shows up, and Kentucky's like, oh, good, it's Kuranoko. He'll he'll tell them that I'm I'm a good guy, but it's actually Takasuji. But then it's also not Takasuji. It's the weird guy from his team 
who has like a puppet and he's also dressed up like him. Wait, before that, the the reveal beforehand is that because it's still in the flashback, he says specifically Takatsuji shows up to take credit for being the one who actually oh, bought for being all the, the one that got them the drinks, the, yeah, the, the yoko, right. the the food thing. He's yeah. like, I bought that all for everyone, and then it cuts to the real life of them waiting, and it looks like it's Takatsuji, and then it's revealed it's him, it's it's him, it's Henpeta. Yeah, it's it's the fucking weird guy. And he's like, yeah, I have to give you a note. And he reads, like, the incorrect note several times. And Akari, like, every time. Or about Yakult. And he's like, there's one in the fridge. Leave one for me, please. Um, and they're like, well, shit. What does any of this mean? But then he reads the right note. And it says, rest in peace. And then it's a Akari can. And they leave it on the table. And then they just leave. And then they're like, oh, my God. I remember... I remember what it is because every time we tried to remember him, all we thought about was Pokari, but we were actually on the right track to discovering his identity. And then it goes into a real not fake flashback and then it ends. Yes. And then it ends right there. Uh, how do you feel about this one's in? Uh, it was pretty funny. I liked the reveal that the guy had the Takasuji puppet, but was <laughs> also dressed up like him. So it was like two layers of hiding the Takasuji. I thought that was funny. This is, I think, um, maybe the third time they've done this joke, and I've fallen for it every single time where I actually thought it was Takasuji until the reveal. It always catches me off guard. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's Takasuji is also always funny for me because he's Dio's voice actor just doing the Dio voice. Mm-hmm. And uh, so every time he says really silly, funny shit, it makes me laugh. I'm just like, hey, yeah, that's good. <laughs> it is. It is really funny to have him say these things, and then you hear it in the Dio voice. It does make the character seem that much more funnier whenever he is allowed to do any form of a joke. Because usually when we see him, he's in his, like, um, I will destroy everything kind of mood set. <laughs> so he's typically not the, the one to be cracking jokes at anything. Um... I liked a lot about this episode, actually. I thought it was very funny. The Especially as someone... We've talked about this beforehand about... And it's funny because Sakamoto's in this, but when he brought up the thing about... Like, uh, Katsura brought up about the flashback arc, it reminded me of when I was reading Sakamoto Days. They had such an intense flashback that when it went back to the main story, I went, oh, wait, that's right. This is not what the... the I forgot that the manga was about these guys. <laughs> We were stuck in that flashback for so long, I completely forgot uh, any of the other characters that were involved in this series. So the flashback is still going on strong to today. You hear his voice just a little bit, but the guy who's playing um, uh, Kuro Kono is the same voice actor as um, as um, Kuroko. It is the same guy. I actually yeah, it is the same voice actor, which is super funny. It is super funny because when you hear his voice, I'm like, wait a minute, is is that? And then I was like, no, that that's 100 percent him. <laughs> they actually went and got him for the parody, which is very funny. I don't think he plays any other character in Gintama outside of this one person. Um, they kept bringing up Pokari, which I was like, so apparently Pokari is different from Pokari Sweat, right? Because Pokari Sweat is like. That's also a drink over here, right? If I'm not... I have no idea. No idea? I know Pakari Sweat is a thing, but Pakari might actually just be a separate sports drink, which is what they're drinking here. Um, but it, I, it kept making me think back to, like, oh, I don't know which one it is. But either way, it was funny seeing all the different Pakari, like that, that scene where they're at the Pakari vending machine, and <laughs> Katra's doing, like... And then they said grimacingly... Is that is that with tax? <laughs> Does that include tax in when you're doing it? It was very funny. Uh, and in general, I like seeing these three back together. I actually, when they did that reveal that Takatsuji was going to be there, for a brief moment, it looked like it was going to be a, one of those arcs where it's like, are they actually going to bring in Takatsuji for this one very weird specific arc? And then the reveal that, like, no, it wasn't. It wasn't him at all. Um was really good and i also like the two examples that they use for it even though i don't know the second one because i've never actually seen uh or read Ryoni kenshin i did recognize oh that's kenshin and then the other one is obviously one piece which are two flashback arcs where they happen in there um but there's probably there's like literally i think every single manga in shonen jump at one point probably has a flashback arc except for dragon ball 
Like, I think Toriyama's might be the only one in the history of Jump to not feature a single flashback arc. Is that true? Think about it. In Dragon Ball, we see him from a kid to an adult. At no point do they ever do, um... They never do a flashback arc. They do show flashes of the the past, like when um, Master That's Roshi's true. Master. I think they I think they only do like scenes, but they don't actually do an actual flashback of any kind. Yeah, exactly. They don't do the actual arc. Like you, we see how um, Demon King Piccolo got stuck in the in the rice cooker, but it's like a quick mention of it. It's not like a full on. Yeah, like, it's, arc. it's just like a this happened. Yeah, exactly. I uh, guess oh, the closest it has is like the Bardock stuff. Yeah, but that's typically the stuff that happened, like, afterwards. It wasn't a part of the main series. It's, like, one of those things, like, he did afterwards, where these are specifically, like, the One Piece example and the Kenshin example. It happens in the middle of them. Um, and the same thing goes for the Sakamoto days, where it's, like, yeah, it happens in, in the middle of it, and it goes through here. Uh, what is actually your favorite flashback arc, by the way? If you can remember any of them, which one is your favorite one? Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, the flashback with Geto and Gojo and all that stuff. And Damn, Toji. That one is a really good one. Hidden Inventory, that's what it's called. Hidden, Hidden inventory. inventory, yes, yes. That That is also the one that got me really confused, and I was like, I don't understand what's going on in Jujutsu Kaisen, because I must have, like, misread something, and I didn't know that they had started <laughs> into a flashback arc at all. Um... I really like the one that they had near the end of um, of Wano in One Piece. One Piece has like five thousand of them. One Piece is actually a nonstop string of like flashback arcs <laughs> near the end of it. So, but that was one of the ones I liked a whole bunch. I'm a- I actually got me thinking thinking about here is like there are a lot of flashback arcs in a bunch of uh, manga in general. It made me think about which one of them is the one I like the most. But anyway, moving on uh nice episode i also did like there's a shot in here that is not in the next episode where they actually recreate the generation of miracles uh front face it's only for the ending part where they talk about like next time on the next episode they have like a little flash that shows all four of them in the in the generation of miracles like a looking thing and it's not in the next episode at all they made it specifically only for the next episode bit which i thought was funny uh let's go on to the next episode which is episode 272 a reunion also brings to the surface surface things you don't want to remember go ahead zen so they finally start remembering him um and they're sitting up on like a rooftop after a big battle in the war and they're talking about all the stuff that happens and they're like um we shouldn't we shouldn't rush back into battle because we lost a lot of people too um and then it's revealed that kentoki and takasuji had a fight um and they had a fight because of they went to the red light district to pick a a prostitute and they both wanted the same one uh, the prostitute that they picked liked Takasugi more, but then they said that Takasugi didn't do anything. He was just, like, uh, edgy and just, like, sat there glaring around the whole time, <laughs> um, which is really funny. It is really um, funny. And so they get mad, and um, they're like, oh, it's t-, they, like, attack Sakamoto, and he goes, you know what would make this better? Doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Uh, then Sakamoto's like, okay, well, we'll there, Katsura says there's no brothels here. Like, we can't do that. And Sakamoto goes, okay, well, what if we just find, like, a widow? And Katsura's like, no, I, I, all I do is stay up all night and listen to her backstory because she's a widow. Which I think <laughs> yeah. might be a reference to the last, that one arc where oh. there's that one widowed woman and all he does is, like, talk to her. <laughs> that is true. I guess this is the, the starting yeah. signs of him only being interested in widows, apparently. Yeah, the, the widow, the widow hunter. Of course. But um, then someone else is on the roof, and it's Kuranoko, and he's like, why don't we just play Kick the Can? Um, and then they cut back to the, the present, and they're remembering the game and everything, and then they're like, oh. Well, we shouldn't do They're They're, like, arguing about it, um, and they're talking shit to each other, because Takasugi and Kentoki are still angry at one another in the in the flashback and stuff. Um, and then there's people that attack... But they set up, like, a fancy trap, and they end up getting them by bombing the, the temple that they sprung the trap on. Um, 
but then they're like, oh no, Kurohoko, we forgot about him. He died in the temple explosion. <laughs> and so they're like, oh my god, he's a ghost now. He's playing kick... Th- Somehow, I don't remember how, but they come to the conclusion that he is a wandering spirit that's been playing kick the can for ever since he died. Um... And so Katsura's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Um, and he leaves, but then the, he sees that there's a can of the drink whose name I already forgot. Pokari. Po- Pokai. Pokari. That's what it was. Um, and the figure's stepping on it, and he's like, "Let's play kick the can." And Katsura screams, and then it's gone. And they're like, "Oh shit!" So then Sakamoto and Kentoki go to the bathroom together to investigate, and Sakamoto leaves and also gets attacked by the ghost. Uh, Gintoki freaks out. And runs away, and then it's revealed that the Kiheitai uh, set it up to let them get rid of the other Joy Patriots so that they can't be a threat to Takasuji. Um, but then the the dude like flubs it really bad. The weird guy. I don't remember the weird guy's name. He's just the guy that keeps saying he's a feminist. Yeah. Yeah. The he, uh, I also know him as like the 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 guy who makes a lot of <laughs> the I'm a feminist jokes, but him yeah. I believe. His name. The original freak, freak the, one, the you will. <laughs> freak zero, the original freak, yeah, the yeah. get all freaks, the Patient proto zero, freak. Patient freak zero, um, yeah. And he keeps flubbing it, and he's like not scary at all. But then the rest of the group is like, oh, we're we're the ghosts, and they start passing the can around, doing <laughs> Kuroko's moves from Kuroko's basketball, like it's the exact same animation for all of his like special techniques. It's really funny. They call it like the misdirection. Yeah, it's the misdirection. Um, but then Gintoki realizes that uh, he has a memory of Kuronoko, and he's like, oh, uh, the real Kuronoko never would like didn't mind if he was forgotten, so he would never haunt someone because it was he was okay with it. Uh, and so then he starts fighting them off, and then another figure pulls a sword on the girl, the the bad guy girl, mm-hmm. and it's actually the real Kuronoko, and he's like, "You better, you better let them go and get out of here," because um, the real Kuronoko had saved the day. Uh, and then every, uh, Sakamoto and Kasuga like, "Kintoki, what happened? What happened?" And um, Kintoki was just hanging out with with Kuronoko, but he's like, "I don't remember." And then. Uh, they have like that that little moment where he's like winking, you know. I, I don't remember what happened, and then I think he writes a letter to um, Sorachi, and he's like, "All right, all right, we animated this shit, but it's this guy, because it's not the guy that we just had <laughs> in the art right now." When he did that, I was like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> he's right." Who is that guy? <laughs> they still haven't said. <laughs> this is really funny. It was a really good bit. Did you catch the really good bit that they had in this one? Which it, which it, bit? It, it was in the opening. So, oh, so, how he's how he's on the rooftop in yeah, the opening when he yeah, wasn't before. Yes, he's on he's on the rooftop with <laughs> them. I had to actually. Yeah. I actually I had to go back because when they mentioned I was like, wait a minute, really? So I went back and looked at the OP, and then I noticed like he was in it. And then when the next one played, he's not in anymore. They only added him for this one specific episode, <laughs> which I was like, "Oh, that's such a that's such a good way of doing it." So, <laughs> such a a nice little uh, addition right there. How do you feel about this one, Zen? It was funny. I really liked that Kuronoko has Kuroko's voice actor. It made me laugh every single time he was on the screen. Yeah. Um, I really liked when they were doing misdirection moves with the can and like passing it around i thought that was really funny uh it was good i, I enjoyed it i like that they do the they um they put up the weird because if you don't know this if uh kuroko's basketball its actual title is the basketball that kuroko plays um and it's always in big ass fonts in the background when you actually watch kuroko's and they actually replicated it in this and they call it the ghost in the hell kuronoko tasuke <laughs> <laughs> which i was like oh that's such a nice little good detail that they put in there they did a very nice job with this one i like it when uh original freak also teamed up with the other ghosts and they had the straight up like oh kuroko <laughs> team kuroko was the name of it and they all wore like a kuroko t-shirt <laughs> to let them know and they had the little like ghost headband which is pretty funny i think he might be 
even though he is maybe the the most disgusting freak of them all because he's like a legit creep like a le- the most he out creeps all the other freaks but i also think he's the funniest of all the freaks <laughs> like in a weird way it's the it's his face that really sells it like that one shot where they have him as a kid and he talks about like oh yeah let me tell you about my childhood and he says something and you just go oh you're so unbelievably not <laughs> not cool everything about you is just disgusting and i hate you and and then the characters say this exact same thing of like you're disgusting and i hate you you're a freak <laughs> get out of here i hope you die um and yeah i thought it was a very nice uh episode i did like how like dedicated they are to making this character actually a lot like kuriko to the point where he actually has like that aura of kuriko of easily being forgotten <laughs> of like oh yeah he his his presence is just so not there that you're able to actually miss him in the episode itself and they play with that in a very nice way and yeah in general it was nice seeing them back here apparently i learned this apparently eskimo brothers is a swear i didn't actually think it was but i didn't think it was either yeah but they bleeped it and i was wondering why they bleeped it because i was like that doesn't seem like a thing that should be bleeped but i guess it was i guess it was i guess in japan they have a specific word for it too um which if you don't know what an eskimo brother is it's when two people have both had had sex with the same woman Mm -hmm. Uh, name that because i think they even bleep it or they like censor it in the subtitle they like put a they put an asterisk over some of the letters yeah yeah and i was like i didn't know that that was considered anything that bad um but i guess if you think about it too deeply it's one of those things of like uh yeah okay i guess it is a reference to sex in some manner (laughs) so i guess um yeah just it didn't seem like that much but no it doesn't seem like that bad but i guess it's also maybe one of those things where it's like i don't know I've, i've never heard someone call it that and been like yo but i've also never been in a situation where someone said what up eskimo brother i'm like mm, that's not really a thing i'm dealing with so maybe it's one of those things of like i've never been called that with someone else so it's not really an insult that would be like like hey you fucker like that's obvious like okay you, this man this person's angry with me i wouldn't consider that with eskimo brother but who knows one person when i asked the question of like is this really considered one he said yeah it's a slur and i'm like i don't think this is a slur <laughs> it might be slightly uh uh um what's the word insensitive to eskimos possibly i'll give you that much but i don't really consider it anything but anyway feel free to tell us how you feel about the, the term eskimo brother and maybe it's just a weird thing of like uh, because of where we live it just does not have that kind of like essence to it to us at all but anyway Good episode, good little tiny arc here. Let's move on to the next episode, which is episode 273. When compared to time in heaven, 50 years of human life resembles nothing but dreams and lottery tickets. Go ahead, Zen. So Hijikata gets uh, given like a lottery ticket, or I think it is, or he doesn't either or no yeah okay no he does get given it because the storm was like hey someone left this behind it's like lost property Mm. uh and he's like i don't give a shit but he ends up taking it um and then he ends up finding out that it is the winning ticket for 300 million yen and he's like oh my god oh my god i i have the 300 million yen ticket and he's like trying to hide from everyone because he's like someone might come back for it you know eventually um so he's trying to decide if he should go and cash it in or not, and he gets so panicked that he starts seeing everybody as uh, Mohawk punks, which I think are a reference to Fist of the North Star. Yes. I think they're yeah. like the gangsters from Fist of the North Star. They look exactly like them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he thinks that they can all detect that he has the winning ticket, even though they're just like regular people. They're like, they have no idea. So he's like hallucinating really bad. And he starts trying to attack them, and then Gintoki blocks his attack. And he calls Gintoki Rao, which is how I knew it was a Fist of the North Star <laughs> reference, because when he says that... Yeah, um, I've run into Rao. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gintoki then is like, hey, I dropped my lottery ticket, but I think it was the winning ticket. Have you seen it? And uh, Hijikata's like, oh, shit. Um, it's his ticket. And he's like, well, I'm not I'm not going to give it to him. Um and they, they, like, run away, and Gintoki's like, what's up with you? What's, your, what's going on right now? Why are you acting funny? 
Uh, and so they decide they're going to go to the bank, and they go into the bank, and it's getting robbed by actual Mohawk people. Uh, it's like a real bank robbery going on. Um, but then Gintoki uh, steals the ticket as the uh, Ahasa, as the Mohawks let everyone except for Hijikata go, and he's like, hey, I've got the 300 million ticket. And then he tries to run away, um, but then... They aren't able to rob the bank, so Gintoki robs the bank and gets steals the money. And Hijikata's like, why does it seem like we're the only ones getting chased for this? And Gintoki's like, yeah, well, you know, I just brought the money. <laughs> um, and they get they get blown up by Okita, who had a like a rocket launcher. Um, and then they they make up like a, a reason as to why they weren't actually in trouble. Um, and Okita is also like, I didn't. I didn't do anything, even though he blew up all the money that they stole with his rocket launcher when he hit them. It was just got like, destroyed. Hmm. Um, and it says they have to pay the money back, and they're they're not able to do it, so they end up just buying more lottery tickets to try to win again, so they can pay off the first lottery. Such a sad ending to it all. <laughs> yeah, how was, unfortunate. Yeah, very unfortunate. Uh, how do you feel about this one, Zen? It was alright. It was pretty funny. It didn't, like, make me laugh too hard until Gintoki was carrying the... The the, money. Um, the money. the bags of money. Yeah, yeah, that was really funny. I like that part. Yeah, there, there, there's, there's definitely, like, um... This one kind of feels like a, like a 15-minute episode that's just, like, slightly too long. Because this would have made mm, a, probably a, a yeah. really it good... It could have been a really good part one, but it wasn't, and so it was kind of like a... Yeah, so it's kind of like, uh, it's a little bit longer than I would have liked it. But the parts that are really funny in it, I did think were really funny. Like, when all the, when when the gang members start going like, hey guys, it's such a good, like, they start treating them like they're their bosses. <laughs> and when they're getting arrested, they go like, see you in jail, Hichikata and Gitoki. <laughs> they're like all waving goodbye to them as they're getting arrested. <laughs> I thought that was very funny. Um, the way that they endeared themselves to them. The way that they're slowly robbing the bank, like when Gidoki goes to be like, I can't show you it, but I, I trust me, give me the 300 million and I'll pay you back. And it looks like he's holding a gun against her, <laughs> which is very, which is very good. Um, I also like the bit where, when they're trying to get them to escape, um, and Gidoki is able to like trick, not, not, yeah, he, trick isn't the right word, but he's able to like, um, make it so that Hijikata is the only hostage that stays with them, and then the rest can go free. And he does, like, this super elaborate, like, long play, and he shows Hijikata, yeah, I got the ticket. And then Hijikata goes, oh, no, I have to do something. And then what he does is just to say out loud, he has $300 million, <laughs> and then that's it. Like, after Gitoki's amazing, like, detailed plan gets uh, destroyed by, like, two <laughs> seconds worth of dialogue... I thought that was funny. But for the most part, it's just kind of okay. When the uh, good bits kick in, it's pretty funny. But for the most part, I feel like it could have probably been uh, shortened. Yeah, there just a little wasn't bit. that much to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of one of those, like, you put them on and you go like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not like the, the weird... If anything, if I could erase the Ninja episode and have this one be tw the 15-minute one that replaces it, and I would do that. I think that would put it in a perfect spot. But let's move on to the final episode to talk about, which is episode 274. This one's also going to be very easy to talk about. Um, it's another two-parter, and we're going to start with the first part of it, which is guys with big nostrils also have big imaginations. Go ahead, Sen. So they decide that they're going to make a poster because they have a bunch of, I think they're like either Blu-rays or DVDs of the series. And they're like, all right, we gotta we gotta make a cool new thing. We're gonna try to market the the series, and so they keep giving these different uh, like pitches for. I, I don't remember if it's a poster or a commercial where they because like, they want to have like a series motto, and they want a picture of each of them, and they want like a um a little tagline next to them, and they all suck. Like get to, like the first one was Shimpachi's suggestion, and it was like um. Gintoki's was cynical snob, his was always on the job, and Kagura's was shyest of the mob. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and everyone was like, that sucks. <laughs> that fucking sucks, dude. <laughs> and then then Kagura goes, and I think Kagura's is like Judy, and then is 
Gintoki's, and then Shibachi's is just and, and then Kakura's is Marie. <laughs> it's <laughs> Judy and Marie. And uh, they keep getting mad about it. Um, and they end up, like, fighting over the, the poster and the pictures, and it just keeps getting fucked up and worse and worse. And so Sadaharu just gets pissed off and walks out, and there's, like, ink and shit everywhere. Um, and he steps on one of the papers with his ink-covered paw, and the poster he ends up making is just a giant paw print with a picture of them all smiling on it, and it's kind of cute. And that's basically the whole thing. Yes. And this is it. Did you see the um, the commercial that they keep referencing in this one? Do you remember what that is? No. That is the commercial for the... I can show it to you right here, actually, because I, I have it right here. I know what it is. If you don't know, the big commercial that they keep referencing in, in here is an old Nintendo one for Mother. The original Mother, not Earthbound, the first one. This is like a famous ad in Japan um, that played there, which has the, like the tagline. I can probably show it here. It should be fine to show. I've shown commercials before with like a giant robot. It's on the front and he comes down and they play the song Eight Melodies from uh, from Mother. And then Ness, and, which I think is called like Ninten in the Japanese one, destroy a giant robot. And then it comes up to like a giant mountain and then the words of it says, uh, no crying until the ending. <laughs> Guaranteed masterpiece, <laughs> which is maybe the boldest fucking ad that you will ever see for a video game. <laughs> um, but of course, the the dude that they also keep referencing throughout this episode is also obviously uh, the creator of Earthbound, which is Shiga Sato Itoi, because he was a famous. Um, before it's really weird. It, if you ever want to look into the history of Mother in general, you should look into it because it's very interesting. But basically, this guy worked in Japan as like a um like a famous like he was famous for making those actual like commercials of stuff and then at some point he got brought in to nintendo and they wanted to make something with him and then miyamoto was like hey how about this and then he was very unimpressed with what miyamoto had showed him so miyamoto basically said like why don't you actually just like work with us um and do something with us but he's like i have an actual job and then he was like well just do less of it and so he did less of his job to make a uh, mother happen <laughs> he quit his not he didn't quit <laughs> it but he like did less of it um which is very funny like everything about the creating uh creation of of earthbound and mother in general is super interesting so that's where this ad comes from and that's why they keep making the joke at the beginning of don't cry until the ending. And then one of my favorite bits here is when him, when he shows him in his ape form and it says, I still can't come up with an ending. <laughs> He's like on the floor and then they start killing him. It was so funny. Like this is such a specific gag to one old commercial that is that only ever came out in Japan. Um, but it's so good. And I also love that ad. That original ad is still really good to this day. Um... It is still, like I said, extremely bold. Like, imagine a game coming out today and having the tagline guaranteed masterpiece at the bottom of it. <laughs> Could you imagine today someone putting out, like, Final Fantasy Rebirth 2, uh, don't cry until the ending, guaranteed masterpiece, and then releasing <laughs> that into the general public. The absolute shit show that would follow, but the way that it's delivered, it was uh, it worked out fantastic. So, even though this is an extremely <laughs> Japan-focused one, I actually ended up really liking this one. Just because I am a fan of Mother and Earthbound, if you could not tell with me going into a full fucking death here. So, I thought this was a very cute one. And even then, when they started going to the gags of making it for their own, I really liked that bit where they were like, okay, everyone just put whatever. And <laughs> what is it that uh, Gidoki puts it out? He puts out, uh, I'm the best. <laughs> Yeah, like, or yeah, yeah, they're they're doing it, and Gintoki just starts to go, "I'm the best." And, then, um, and it goes Shinpachi's, I think, is uh, the workers are really nice, so ask them if you need anything. <laughs> and then yeah, they all start talking over each other of doing their own. Yeah. And I thought it was. And then really I think funny. Kagura is just screaming, "I can do it! I can do it! That's right! I can do it!" <laughs> she like goes throughout the entire thing. Oh, I thought it was a really good. Episode. I really liked it. <laughs> How do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, it was really funny. It was it was a cute little ending with the the paw print and yeah. just the whole thing was just like stupid, but in a good way. Yes, it feels it has like that Gintama feel of like when it sometimes it's very hard to describe 
specifically Gintama because it's a show where it's a bunch of silly to dumb jokes that sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're not, but they come at you very quickly. And they're also very heavily referenced. But in between that is a very emotional center that when it's when you kind of combine it around it, it forms like a very it kind of forms like a very nice rice ball where around the rice ball there's a whole bunch of like rice covered it and then in the middle of it it's like a very delicious chicken and you bite into it and somehow it works that's what kind of Gintama feels like to me and this episode I think in a very quick roundabout way shows those parts off very well um and yeah (sighs) good good part for one and now let's go to the second part of this episode um, you never accept a new Sentai series at the start, but at the final episode, you don't want it to end. Which I'll say that's true, as someone who's a big fan of Sentai stuff. <laughs> a lot of... <laughs> Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what it's about. So, uh, the four devas of the Kabuki district are trying to improve the image, and there's a, there's a new four of them. Um, because of the, the war that happened, like, the, the very serious arc that happened before. Yep. Um... And then Otai ends up being one of them. She's like the one of the new devas, and she's trying to figure out what to do. And they end up deciding they want to make a mascot of of the Kabuki District. And so, says, why don't we get an old guy and we'll call him Kabuki? <laughs> and it's just like an old dude. Um, and they keep like redoing it, and eventually. One of them, I don't remember the guy's name, but it's like the guy with the dog. The guy who really loves his dog. Um, he's like, this is stupid. I hate this. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, yes. And he goes to leave, and he gets, like, set up by uh, a, a, by Ote, who, like, tries to get it. She's like, I need everyone <laughs> out of my way. And <laughs> she, like, sets them up for selling illegal stuff. I don't remember what exactly what it was. It was, like, um, a, a fake version of the, of the bear. Uh, I know what they're talking about because my sister had these growing up. Um, fuck, I wish I could remember. But it's a very, it's a very, very distinct Japanese bear that they're ripping off. <laughs> I wish I could remember its <laughs> name. Uh, yeah, and, the, uh, yeah, and she like she set them up to get arrested so that they would be out of the way so she can instigate her mascot of the Kabuki district. Mm-hmm. And I also like her at the end because like it's just like you said, you need to be more than cute to survive in this district, <laughs> which I thought was very funny. She fits very well as like one of the four uh, new devas. Actually, <laughs> she fits perfectly into that role. Um. This episode is really weird in the middle of it, sim- but not in the weird way of, like, the other one, where they start making re- a lot of Japanese references at once, and I was only held by the fact that I knew the wrestler that they were talking about, which was um, Inoki, because they make a joke about, because they start making chin jokes at one point, because, like, what if we get a wrestler with, like, a really distinct chin and it's Inoki? He's like, that's just literally Inoki that you showed up there, uh, which I think is funny because Inoki is a very famous Japanese wrestler. Do you remember um, AJ, the guy in AJ Styles' group, uh, Luke Gallows? Mm-hmm. Uh, at one point, Luke Gallows had such a terrible match in New Japan, and Inoki came out. It was such a shitter of a match that he came out in the middle of it and started yelling, No! No! Stop, like yelling at them to end the match and the crowd was cheering him and he was like literally <laughs> going, he was like literally fed up with it he was like no and he like started ringing for the bell for them to fucking end it and they quickly ended their match and everyone left and he was like never again <laughs> will you see something like that while I'm here and the people started cheering him and that's the, the image that I have of Anoki is him being so pissed at Luke Gallows for putting on just the world's shittiest match possible. And I remember, because I was watching that, but I was like, nah, this match is shit. It's straight up that's, bad. That's very funny. It is. Um, but overall, I thought it was a, a pretty alright episode. I was like, alright, this is this is nice. This is actually a nice follow-up to see what's going on with the Deva stuff. Um, just because it's been so long since the last time we had it, and it seemed like, obviously, two of those members... One is retired, the other one is um, gone. She's in her prison thing the last time we saw her. Um, and the other two never seemed to be all that crazy about seeing the devil. So it was kind of nice seeing the, the new form of them. 
And I like the ending here because it says a lot about Otai, about her, the 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 face she had at the beginning of like, oh yeah, I really wanted to care about this district. And then at the end when she was like, ha idiot, <laughs> nice going, fool. I will roll. I will rule this district by the end of it. I thought it was very funny. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, it was okay. Yeah, I, I like when Otai is like revealed to be evil. That was funny. <laughs> but the rest of it, I was like, ah, it's all right. yeah. Is a... uh, it, it was it was just a really funny like juxtaposition because at first she's like thank you for being honest with me and i know that you love this town and i love it too and i thank you for being like that and he's like yeah whatever and he leaves and then she sets him up to go to jail <laughs> it was really funny <laughs> the rest of it was like eh, but that part was really really funny yeah yeah Again, I really do wish sometimes that we, we understood as much Japanese references as possible. But this one, they just lost us at the chin bit. When they start, when that chin chin, the infinite chin started happening, and it's and then another guy popped up, and they started like singing a banana song. I was like, I don't know anymore, man. I'm trying my best here. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to a toy. That's, that's not a toy. I'm going to hold on to Inoki, and that's about it for me. But by the end, I did like the little bit there. So that's episode 274. And that's another five episodes down, Zen. Woo! We did it! And we did it a week afterwards as well. That is what we like to call a streak that we got going on here. So let me quickly pull up my notes because we're going to start talking about uh, some other stuff. Let me first find the correct word doc. How about that? There we go. That's what it's called. I have like five different documents all called Gintama stuff. All right. So this is what it's looking like for next week. It's going to be, potentially, if, we, if we're if we here for next week, it's going to be episodes 275 to 278, which is four episodes. One of the three of them is going to be the Deco Boko arc, which is, funny enough, the arc that actually inspired us to start Shonen Archive, because this is the gender swap arc. Do you remember? Yeah, because it was from... Uh, Jambuji. Jambuji, yeah. Because they, they released, like, a limited version of Gintoki and, I think, the Okita. Mm -hmm. It was, again, yeah, it was Gintoki and Okita as they were, they were the limited units for it. And as we were talking about it in there for our Jampudi, what the hell did we call our Jampudi thing that when we did it? We have so many different things over the years that I forgot. I remember Shonen Or, that was Shmorgish Board. Yeah, that was, did we do a Jampudi one? Yeah, I don't even did. remember doing that. Oh, yeah, no, we did. What the fuck did we call it? All right, let me see if I can quickly pull it up if I click on the upload video. Jampudi Jams. Jampudi Jam. Jams. That's a pretty good name. It's a rip. Rest in peace, Jampudi Heroes. Yeah, rip. Rip, unfortunate. But it was the doing and talking about that arc and being like, man, what the hell happens in Gintama? What, yeah, what? you're like, what is this fucking show? <laughs> yeah, we were talking about how there were so many different Shonen Jump series, especially because when, when we were playing Jampudi there would be so many different of them and we'd just be like here's a character from this and we're like that seems pretty cool but we don't have the time in the world we would have to have like some kind of dedicated show of us talking about them if we were going to actually legitimately do it and that's how this one started and that's how we started going through gintama that was that was the reason why gintama was the first one that we started covering immediately it was that first specifically so it would be nice to actually talk about the arc that um was the reason why we started it. And I can finally be like, I now understand what's going on. Uh, <laughs> now I understand who all these characters are, were. Because if I remember right, the characters in it didn't even have the same names. It wasn't like, the Gin Gintoki's wasn't called Gintoki. She was called something else. But anyway, those three episodes, that will be there. And then it will be a one-off episode, which um, will be 278. And then after that, I've actually done some of the calculations and it looks like there might be maybe around 16 more episodes from Gintama from us before we're 100% complete. So after those 16, basically in theory 16 more weeks of Gintama stuff. And then we are 100% done with Gintama until the Kentucky Sensei uh, anime thing starts. <laughs> but still, crazy. We're really nearing the end of it now. Um, and after that will be another slew of uh, arc episodes there too but that's what it's looking like for next time now we start doing the ending bits where I ask everyone uh, Zen what's going on in your channel if you want to see more Zen you can go over to Zen's channel What are you? what's going on this week uh, we're always doing Shonen and Chill mm -hmm. 
it's uh, been a tumultuous time with the ending of Academia and the ending of uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. So we're examining what we want to do for the future because we really like Kagurabachi, but like not that much else in the scene right now. So what what do we do? Do we continue with Shonen Chill or do we try to move it into a new format? We don't know yet, but it's it's all mm. being brainstormed. Yeah, it's a very tough position to be in you know, of like trying. Yeah, to be it's like, it's rough. Yeah. Uh, especially in a series like that, that's why I always found it. This is the same thing that we eventually ran into the problems of with doing the old Dokkan podcast back on Modcast, which is when you absolutely love the game, it's super easy to talk about it, right? But then when it's in a lull, that's when shit starts to be like, all right, um, here's this week. Okay, that's it. And yep. And it can be especially tough for Jordan and Jump when it's like, okay, here's the one that I really super care about, and then here's a bunch of the other ones, I guess. Here we go. Let's talk about them real quick. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit like it, people can feel the disingenuous, and I'm not good enough at being a content creator where I can hide the disingenuous. <laughs> Same. Like, when I am not interested, I'm just like, dude, this blows. Like, yeah. I... I have nothing to say. It's crazy. No, no. Yeah, we're we're very similar in that matter. Where we're both just like, yeah, well, we can't fake it. If we did, we would be top of the game, but we we can't, unfortunately. <laughs> All we have is our passion, and when the passion's not there, you're just not feeling it. So that's the luck trying to figure out what to do next. I like the idea you had about the idea of like doing shorts related to it. Um, yeah, shorts are just kind of like they don't really do anything for you, like yeah. on YouTube as a creator. They don't help your channel in any real way. Uh, no, so I feel, it feels like all it does is give too. you give you more people to look at. It, that's, it, that's it, about it gives you like a big burst of like quick subs if people like it. But the problem is that they don't watch your actual content; they just watch your shorts, so it doesn't really help. Hmm. But you know. We'll, yeah. we'll see. It's a balance. It's hard. It's hard out here. It's hard out here doing the YouTube game sometimes. It is. It is. Uh, and then we also do wrestling as well. Wrestling yeah. and chill. Yeah, wrestling and chill. Can't wait to talk about it this week. There's so much to talk oh, about. Oh God, yeah. Bad <laughs> blood. Oh. I've got bad blood with bad blood. Yeah, more like <laughs> shit pay per view. <laughs> That's not fair. That's not fair, but the bad blood could have been better. Find out more in Wrestling and Chill when we get there. Over on my side, what's going on? Uh, Sparking Zero came out, and I released a video on that. You can go check yeah, that out. Yeah, it did come out. It did come out. There's a bunch of all this stuff. I'm all currently in the preparation stage of getting stuff ready for 13 Nights of Halloween. So pretty close to Halloween time, there should be some more... Halloween type videos, um, along with the always, always, always there for go videos that are the reason that um, I can do stuff like Shonen Archive and not have to worry about like how many people are watching. Because for the most part, I know most people here are here for for go. And as long as I do for go videos, the channel will be fine. And the rest of it, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> It's like when um, a movie star, which I'm not a movie star, does a really big movie and then they do like a really small movies afterwards because it's like, well, I already got the paycheck. I got Iron Man money. I can do in theory anything except for to except for him who decided that I'm actually going to blow all my money on making doc uh, making a Doolittle $200 million movie, which was very stupid of him. That's usually not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> but anyway, you get what I'm saying here. Um, there should be more stuff going up hopefully soon. I kind of want to make more sparking, but I am running into an issue of, uh, well, obviously if you want to actually make more stuff, it would make sense to jump on ranked and I just hate playing ranked games. On I don't, yeah, I don't really like playing ranked mode because even though I don't really care at like what my rank is, I still get tilted when I lose. Yeah. And I, I'm, yeah, I like you hear, you hear me when I'm losing to you. Like, even in there, I'm making excuses and I'm making a bunch of, like, this. Imagine if it's just me and doing that and nothing else. I feel like that's yeah, not... Yeah, I don't know. I, Sparking Zero, like, I want it, but am I going to really get it over... Uh, metaphor. Metaphor? Uh, probably not. And then there's another RPG coming out soon. It's Fantasian by uh, Sakaguchi, and it's got Nobu Uematsu music on it, so I really want that, too. Oh, shit, really? I didn't even hear about yeah, that. Yeah, it's... it's uh, apparently, it's the last game that Uematsu said he's gonna like lead on. 
It's the last one he's going to make all of the music for because he's, he's too old now, he thinks. Oh, shit. Uh, so, and they, a lot of, a lot of the reviews are like, this game is like the spiritual, like, revival of a classic Final Fantasy title. Like, if you love older Final Fantasy games, like, this oh, game is, you're going to love this. Fuck, so why I'm did like, you do shit. <laughs> yeah, I know, me too. Oh, I'm like, you... ah, son of a Why bitch. did you have to tell me of another, and okay, you know, this has been a really crazy year for JRPGs, by the way. <laughs> it has. Also, it's really cool. Um, if you look at the, let me try to find the picture that I saw. The the backgrounds on it and stuff are like made of like a like a diorama. Like all, you know, RPGs had, uh, like the PlayStation One era had like painted backgrounds. They mm-hmm. weren't like rendered in engine. Yeah. Yeah. Here, look at the screenshots of this in in this article they're like physical dioramas made that the game is played on with those drop all right let me see that's kind of fucking crazy yeah there it's like a little physical it's the thing being built and then used as the backdrop for the art it looks awesome this does look is this only on Doesn't PS5? It? No, I don't think so. I think uh, I looked it up and I think it said all everything. Steam, okay. Xbox, all over the place. Uh, I might have to look into this. Doesn't it look sick? Yeah, it does. I didn't even I didn't even hear about this game um, <laughs> until a little while ago. So I'll add that on there. Man, there's so much. This is an insane year. How many the like not counting that like I even for, I forget sometimes that fucking like a dragon infinite wealth was the beginning of this year like that that was like the beginning it and final fantasy 7 uh part 2 is that what it's called rebirth 2 is uh final fantasy 7 rebirth yeah yeah both of those came out in like february right uh yeah that sounds right like february i think it's february 29th yeah it was a leap year i'm pretty sure yeah and typically in a normal year that would be it for jrpgs and you'd be like, man, what a crazy year! We got two of them this year, really good. Uh, yeah, and there's like, there's like twelve this year, man. It's there crazy. Is. There is there was those those two. The Persona Three remake that I still have to go through was really well done. Uh, it's good to the point where I know because Toast, um, Toaster of Fun, if you don't know, uh, uh, old friend of everything. He the he got on such crazy hopium. He said like, you know what, man? Maybe the answer will be good this time. I'm like, that's how I know you're crazy for that remake. If you're saying the famous old part of Persona Three that was really bad and hated by everyone, maybe it'll be good this time. <laughs> that's crazy level of like, yeah, this seems like pretty good. Metaphors also came out coming out pretty soon. This one that you said right here. The fucking Dragon Crest remake that looks awesome as hell is also coming out. I think it's using the engine from... I don't remember what it is, but it looks really nice. That's the one where everyone... It, 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 it's definitely keeping up with the Dragon Quest type of art style and everything. And There's a whole bunch of them that were also released that I'm just like not remembering at the moment. But it's been a crazy-ass year for JRPGs. Which is awesome if you're a fan of them like we are. Like we clearly are. But also... You have to realize JRPGs are really fucking long, so mm-hmm. <laughs> finding the mm-hmm. time to actually play them all, a little bit tough. It's a little bit hard out here <laughs> trying to find the time for them all. It, you should. It's a. Uh, it's thankful enough that we have time to set aside for Gintama or anything else in general. To be to be real with you. <sighs> but anyway, all good stuff coming forward. So to keep uh, keep an eye out on both our channels. As always, if you want to sh- show support for the show itself. You can leave a like, a comment, but in general, watching it is good enough for us. And that's it for Shonen Archive this week, so why don't you say goodbye, Zen? Goodbye, everybody.